makes guitars that make America sound cool. But Gibson CEO Henry Juskovitz is being ordered to change his tune. It sounds almost a little ironic that you're playing the blues right now. I got the blues. <laughs> That's because in late August, armed federal agents raided his Tennessee factories for the second time in two years, alleging the illegal importation of rare protected wood. In this case, ebony and rosewood from India. An affidavit filed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service alleges Gibson falsely labeled the wood shipment to make it sound legal and suspiciously omitted the company's name as the recipient. But so far, no charges have been filed. It almost sounds like this company was engaged in smuggling these raw materials into the country. Well, we were not engaged in, in smuggling. We have been buying fingerboard stock on a regular basis from India for 17 years. On the neck of a guitar, the tropical hardwood is prized for its look and durability. But it's subject to a law called the Lacey Act aimed at fighting black market trade and protected animal parts and plants and anything made from them. But the material that came in the box from India looks just like this. Looks very similar. Juskovic says the fingerboards Gibson imported from India were confiscated as illegal wood by the federal government. The law says that if, if a guitar or an instrument of any kind crosses a border, you have to know the species of wood that every component is made of and where it came from. If this is true, could hundreds of international stars like Paul McCartney and B.B. King risk seeing their Gibsons confiscated at the border? Michelle Obama gave a Gibson guitar to the wife of the president uh, or prime minister of France uh, just uh, a year ago. The first lady may have broken the law? Uh, yes. The Lacey Act does give federal agents broad authority to pursue smugglers. But if you own a Gibson, don't worry. When we asked the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for clarification, it released this brief statement. We target corporations and individuals who are removing protected species from the wild and making a profit by trafficking in them. And right now, in spite of Juskovich's strong claim of innocence, Gibson is a target. Nightmare. It's a nightmare. It took almost a week before Gibson got back into full operation, but the damage had already been done. Just the shutdown of that one day with the materials that were taken cost the company over a million dollars. And now the maker of the guitars that have commanded the spotlight for over a hundred years has no choice but to play on and wait for its day in court. David Mattingly, CNN, Nashville.